Welcome back to the Voice of Chennai. How healthy or sick is your MediClaim policy? We are joined live in our studio by Dr. C.J. Philip, the Deputy General Manager of New India Assurance. We are also joined live uh, by Mr. G. Krishnamurti, who is a former chairman of LIC, a former Ombudsman member of the Insurance Board, and also currently advisor of the Consumer Association of India, by uh, Mr. Sheila Anand, who is a Vice President of TTK Healthcare, and uh, from our Hindu studio by Mr. Balaji, who is a medical insurance agent. First, we've got an email from Anuradha who says, my father, my, fa my grandfather, in fact, friend's father, sorry, was recently admitted at a private hospital in the city, which made him go through all the tests he had already undergone at another hospital and even admitted in the ICU for no reason. And the hospital's retort was, hold your breath, that the patient anyway has MediClaim. Is there no end to this mess? Dr. Philip, is there no end to this mess? Just because they have insurance, you make the person, nobody wants to stay even for a minute longer in a hospital. The, right. the smell of hospital disinfectant is enough to drive you away and nobody wants to really be there for you know, that extra time. Yeah. That's right. See, uh, now what is happening in this particular uh, the equation of insurance company, third party administrator, hospitals. Uh, at this point, juncture, we don't want to keep blaming anybody. The idea is to make, uh, optimize the outgo and so that we can see that we can give insurance protection to the insuring public at much lesser cost. There is no point in increasing the But these cases, the what do you do? I mean, here they are trying to, the, obviously, it's, uns uh, it's unscrupulous, uh, unfair trade practice. Right. Anyway, I don't want to comment anything on that. I am a hospital fraternity. But anyway, the initiatives have started. Third party administrators. Why don't you speak out against the hospital fraternity? Uh, why, why are you being diplomatic? No, why we should be speaking out? And I will, now we are the, especially the ministry has taken a lot of initiative, the uh, GIPSA companies, that is, Government of India companies have taken a lot of initiatives. TPAs have been already put in place. Now, for example, Chennai TTK is a TP, uh, uh, third party administrator who has been given the responsibility of trying to talk to the hospital, trying to develop a sort of a system of a tariff card and also trying to bring in certain good practices. A tariff card means making it all the more commercialized. But you spoke about the ministry and of the authorities actually being more responsive to the needs of, let me bring in Dr. Mr. Krishnamurti here. So I'd like to quote what the IRDA chairperson had to say just recently. He said, we have long moved away from the administered, administered price regime and it's for the market forces to determine the price of their product. Telling comment there, sir. So are we, is the customer king really in this case? Now, you see, the, uh, when the MediClaim uh, was first introduced in 1986, it was more or less uh, thought that it was uh, introduced as a social security measure. Now, we have come a long way with uh, the private insurers also in the fray. So, now it is becoming a, a sort of a, a, a business proposition. And uh, naturally, when there, there is going to be uh, hot burns between uh, the 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 uh, insurance companies, hospitals, and the TPAs and all. Now the insurance companies are uh, also uh, in a position to um, uh, review their uh, um, cost structure, and if they are going to uh, incur 130 percent of uh, the claims, uh, uh, 130 percent of the uh, premium as claims then naturally they will have to think of uh, restructuring their entire uh, product line. Therefore, they are thinking of uh, um, for particularly um, high-end uh, customers and uh, where right. high-end hospitals are also giving treatment, quality okay. treatment. So, sorry to cut you short, we've got Mrs. Amrinder Kaur now uh, who's joining us from Kodambakam. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, welcome to the show. What is your question, please? I'm Aminda Sabrawal from Kodam Bakam. I'm a MediClaim policy holder and I pay my uh, premiums regularly. So in spite of paying the premiums regularly, when we go to the hospital, <clears throat> we have to suffer a lot. There is only one person attending to our grievances. So I would request you people to please place some more people so that we are already in a trauma that time. And then again, we have to run here and there for two, three days. It takes at least two or three days for you to complete the process. So I would request you to please place more people over there. So at least in that sense, we can be a little assured. 
So that's that's a very very yeah. valid observation. The interesting feedback for you. Yeah, uh, but Sanjay, I think this is the area which is I have no uh, control. Let, let, okay, let's ask uh, let's ask Sheila Anand here. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Sheila, do you, you heard uh, Mrs. Amrinder Kaur there? What do you have to say about? I mean, the the, the kind of service that people get after paying that uh, that hefty premium. If there's nobody really to take care of you, it's almost like. Are you then treated like a second class citizen when you go on just because you've go, you're going in with a, a cashless hospitalization card? Uh, see, actually when you go into a hospitalization and what she's talking about is uh, somebody to be placed at the hospital who can help them go through the cashless facility or even an admission into the hospital. So it's up to the hospital for, to have more staff at that place and I don't think any of us can help them. But uh, as a TPA, I think all of us have gone through a process where it is not only facts now, but in some hospitals, we have an online procedure. So the moment we receive a request on the online from the uh, hospitals, it's done immediately to the hospital. But how so do you actually define your role? I mean, uh, a consumer will tell you that uh, the, the TPA is actually the person uh, who cries foul, who wants to ensure that who is like a buffer between the, the insurance between uh, uh, Dr. Philip and the consumer there. So the TPA is the one who tries its, uh, his or her best to ensure that the policy is rejected. Is that correct? Is that a fair, uh, no, a fair that comment? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that it's not a fair comment because the, uh, the work of a TPA starts only after the person has received a fax or an email from the hospital. So if there is a person who is waiting at the hospital, we wouldn't even know that they are waiting for no, a cashless facility. Cashless hospitalization, ma'am, for let's say for an emergency, someone suffers a heart attack, he has a valid MediClaim policy. Uh, he goes to the hospital. There are, are there, there are also hospitals which actually delay treatment. They, they, there's some kind of uh, informal verification that goes on as to whether this is a valid, uh, whether the, the money will be reimbursed or not. We all know that even when it comes to accident cases, despite the Supreme Court saying medical uh, attention first, legal formalities later. With regard to insurance also, this is an observation many, many of your viewers have called us in and told us that this is a problem they face. There is a delay, that golden hour is violated because people are looking at hospitals are commercial ventures they are looking at their shareholders rather than their patients they are looking at profits rather than cure and they make people wait and in, the, and in that precious golden hour a life may be lost i wouldn't say the hospitals make people wait in emergencies when it's a case of an accident or when it's a case of a heart attack i don't think any of uh, the hospitals would make uh, patients wait just because there is no cashless facility available or uh, i mean uh, if, if there is an emergency amount that has to be paid and if it's uh, been paid by the family. But there are the hospitals family. we know. I have reported personally on cases where a three-year-old girl was sexually abused, was raped. A corporate hospital refused to entertain her, asked her to go all the way to a government hospital, which was one and a half hours away from the city, uh, and uh, uh, refused to treat her, even give uh, first aid. There are cases where uh, even accident victims are sent away because they don't want to really take who will pay, who will really pay for their treatment. So here. There are cases, ma'am, if, if, let me ask, okay, let me ask, uh, bring in Mr. Balaji here, the medical insurance agent. Mr. Balaji, put your hand across your heart and tell me uh, honestly, what is your experience in dealing with TPAs, yes, with third-party administrators? Be honest, here's your chance. In that, yeah, I'll be honest. In that matter, I'll tell you, Star Health and Allied Insurance Company, we don't have any third-party administrators. We take care of the uh, people, uh, patients, our patients, our, uh, our staff will be there. They'll be uh, assisting the hospital and immediately it will be done in case of an emergency immediately we are allowing the patients to be hospitalized and uh, expenses will be taken care of immediately see as a part of an agent uh, what why, why do is whenever the patient is telling us it's an emergency immediately i go there and see to that he's comfortable with the hospitalization all right but but that, this is not doesn't really tie in with what viewers tell us miss because mr balaji is making himself sound trying to uh, sound like a, a male version of florence nightingale uh, Dr. Philip uh, indicating that you know it's a business that probably like uh, almost missionaries of charity that you're going on a loss at its social service. Let's ask a senior citizen now, Mr. Tito, who joins us from R.A. Puram. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show. What's your question, sir? All right, it's Mr. Tito's son, I think, yes. Hi, uh, this is Tito from R.A. Puram, and I wanted to ask that uh, you guys, when you guys provide medical insurance, all these in medical insurance companies, you guys claim to be of good faith and uh, provide assistance to people who really need them, but then you guys seem to have uh, dubious motives when it comes to people who are over 60. Even if you do give them uh, medical insurance, you run a lot of health checks and, you know, stuff like that. Why is that? I mean, if you're really interested in helping people, 
and you know basically that's what insurance is you help people when you need them people save for a time of a need if you're really going to help them why do you have such uh, restrictions when it comes to people above 60 because they would need the help the most so are you like morally integrated into your cause are you doing the right thing when you are putting medical checkups and restrictions for people over 60 because in fact these people are the ones who are going to need that assistance the most so why is that there is a discrimination between people who are above 60 and people who are below 60 thank you all right, that's a very, very valid question. I'm sorry, I think actually it was Mr. Tito's grandson, not Mr. Tito, because he's far from a senior citizen. I apologize for that. Uh, but here again, of course, now, only now, very recently, if you take a medical policy, insurance policy for your parents or, you know, relatives, you get that tax uh, yeah. incentive. Yeah. But why is that? They are the ones who need it, sir. Shall why I so many? And, and you don't refund the entire tra treatment cost, right? It's only what, 80%, uh, 70%? No, 100%. Okay. In many cases, there's yeah. only 80% that is reimbursed. Yeah. And also, again, there are um, uh, senior citizens who have a mental block, sir. Let's be yes. practical. Yeah. To go to the doctor, get tests. Many of them have the white coat syndrome. They don't like going to doctors. So they are reluctant to do all these tests. But you have a whole slew of tests. They feel like patients even before they have to go to the hospital. I, I want to ask one question to Tito's grandson. Yeah. Whether he is insured, he can also support his grandfather by, support, by insuring himself. And one more statement, of course, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to confront. Mm. See, always there's a feeling that insurance is a help, assistance and all that. Actually, you are buying a protection. And normally when you commercial buy a Commercial product at the end of the it's day. It's a commercial product at the okay. end of the day. So don't say social service and all that, social welfare. Ultimately, when the entire population, now we have said 5 lakh, five crores of 5% 5 of the population, let's say, of course, it's more than 110. Let there be a bigger population like in western countries or US what's happening. So the premium could be down. It could become gradually a social welfare model. That's what India is developing into. But unfortunately what we said, we are not against senior citizen. Again, we are all going to be people. We are going to be old. We need to support our own parents and ourselves. We are getting old. Before you retire, will you come up? Will you take the initiative and come up with a citizen, senior citizen friendly policy, sir? Sir, we have a senior citizen policy. It's a totally a mind block. People saying you are not interested. Ultimately, we want the welfare for everybody. But only the thing is... What is the premium, sir? Is it affordable? Why not affordable? One lakh, it comes to something like 3,500, 4,000. No, but for one lakh, what will you get, sir, today? I mean, two to three days in a hospital today, the, what is the hospital bill? No, but you are talking about the... the, the Why can't you give senior citizens a discount, sir? So, where do you give the subsidy from? All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so coming back to, we've also got live callers. Now, if you're wondering, we've not, in fact, we've decided, a uh, lot of viewers have been calling us. We've decided to, in fact, put their interests, their interests are paramount. We've decided to extend the show. It's not just a half-hour show. It's a one-hour show. We'll go on till 9 o'clock as a special case in response to requests from several viewers, hundreds of viewers who have lined up. We've got Ramu, one such uh, uh, viewer who's uh, taking the trouble to call from Madipakam. Ramu, welcome to the show. What's your question, sir? Yeah, actually, I am a regular member of Medical Assurance, New India Assurance. And I completed 59 years in January okay. 19, uh, 2010. And I would like to enhance my premium value, actually insurance value for all the members, and also floating policy for 3 lakhs. And there is no clear answer from my agents as well as from the officers. Even I have gone, undergone through the test actually during February 2010. And uh, exclusions are there, actually it's no exclusions because of 5 years. I don't know where to go and uh, I want to enhance my policy value. I, I am ready to pay the extra premium. Please clarify on this. This is a new India assurance, right, Mr. Amo? Yes, sir. This is your, uh, just up your street. Would you, uh, would you yeah, take up yeah. his case? Uh, yeah, Mr. Amo, uh, you can talk to me. Uh, I had that uh, new India. Do you want to give out your mobile number to him, sir, yeah, and all uh, others? Uh, I, I can give the mobile number also. It's already available on the website. Yeah. Uh, what is the number? You can give him his number. Yeah, 94450. Yeah, Mr. Ramo, you can take down that number. We can also flash Dr. Phillips' number on the screen, uh, 91450. 11700. 11700. All right. That's right. So, what would you like to answer, Ramu, and to also others who have similar questions? Yeah, sir? Uh, what I'm saying is uh, if there are any specific uh, policy and claim related issue, it's definitely better they contact us, I mean, our respective companies. No, but in this case, but, what, uh, what he said regarding the enhancing the sum insured, it is possible. You can enhance the sum insured, and fortunately, it's 59. It's not in that uh, danger zone. You can always so do So, you're that. admitting that 60 is a danger zone? No, I'm happy. I'm <laughs> thankful to Ramu that he is insured young and he's already having for the first, uh, first four or five years. And actually, he is helping the community also because he is providing fund for me to pay the claim for others. 
and maybe one day I will pay for, of course, I, God forbid, nothing should happen, you will be also being su supported by others. That is the very purpose of the insurance. And uh, in enhancing the sub insured, it is possible, but not for the diseases for which he has suffered earlier. All right. But you will also, we have got an, uh, an SMS from Vidya who says, why is not there mediclaim for new diseases like swine flu? We have not thought about this. Uh, there is no exclusions specifically. For swine flu? If it is there in hospitalization uh, and if it is uh, treated, it can be given. Why? Right? Swine flu has may not be excluded. All right. Time to head into another short break on The Voice of Chennai. We'll be back as I said. This is a, not a half hour show. This is a one hour show. It's a special case for our viewers. Stay tuned. <laughs>